Uh, good afternoon, distinguished professors, scholars, uh, guests. So uh, now we'll start our third session. Um, it's an honor to moderate the session um, at the Exalted Spirits Conference and to introduce our first speaker today, Johanna Mehta, who will present a paper entitled The Memory of Serapium of Themois in Egypt Through the Ages. Welcome, uh, Johanna, and the floor is yours. Um, the memory of Serapion of Temuis in Egypt throughout the ages. I will um, follow the following structure, introduction, research questions, means of commemoration and veneration of a Coptic saint, and means of commemoration and veneration of Abba Sarapion of Temuis, then a comparison between Abba Sarapion and other saints in terms of the means of commemoration, veneration, and then the popularity of Abba Sarapion of Temuis, and at the end, the dynamism of the popularity of the saint through time. Serapion of Temuis is a disciple of Saint Anthony and a friend of Saint Athanasius, who was ordained as a bishop sometimes before 339 AD. He could be the first to be ordained as a bishop among the monks. He played an important role in the theological controversies in the fourth century. Many works are attributed to him, among them a liturgy. This saint is commemorated in most of the traditional churches. However, no lives written about him are preserved. Nonetheless, he is cited in many of the ecclesiastical histories and other literary works as well. This paper hopes to shed some light on the cult of Sarapion, of the Bishop of Temuis, throughout the ages in Egypt and beyond, through a survey of different themes as follows. His mention in the literary sources, either historical or, or hagiographical, whether any church was dedicated to him, whether his works did circulate and spread, later works attributed to him, his wall paintings in the monasteries of the Red Sea, as well as some contemporary icons, his commemoration and iconography abroad beyond the local Coptic boundaries. Furthermore, it investigates the phenomenon of, pop of popularity of a saint. The research, research questions was, how was Abba Sarapion of Tumis commemorated? Was Sarapion of Tumis a popular saint either during his lifetime or after it, and why? What is the scale with which we can evaluate the popularity of a saint in a certain place and time? What are the criteria that make a saint popular in a given place and time? And is the cult of a saint static or dynamic through time? The means of commemoration and veneration of a Coptic saint through a fast survey of the different means of commemoration and veneration of a Coptic saint or a saint in the Coptic calendar, the following was found. The veneration of the reliques and secondary reliques of the saint or objects related to him, giving his name to people and places, including shrine, altar, church, monastery, complex city, dedicated to the saint or bear his name, or places where he lived or witnessed important events of his saintly life. Then the liturgical commemoration and the paraliturgical devo devotions and the textual re records, including hagiographical texts, sayings, liturgical texts, false attribution of works to the saint to give the work more importance and authority, mentions of the saint in literary and documentary text and the spread and diffusion of these works. And yeah, lastly, uh, the iconographical representations, either being um, icons, wall paintings, funerary stila, flasks, medallions, manuscripts, illumination, etc. Then the means of commemoration of Sarapion of Temuis. From the above mentioned means of veneration, only some of them were found for Abba Sarapin of Tumis. Um, concerning relics and secondary relics, nothing was found. Um, no, 
name uh, attested for people or places um, except for a church um, mentioned in a work of Ep Ep Epiphanius of Salamis in Alexandria dedicated to a certain Serapion. Does this church bear, uh, bear the name of Serapion of, Tem of Temuis or that of Serapion, the martyr of Alexandria under Decius around 250? There are no evident arguments for either of them. But I tend to attribute the church to Serapion the martyr being a martyr and Alexandrian. Um, about his commemoration, no attested commemoration in any known hagiographical or liturgical text in the Coptic Church. However, he has a commemoration in many other churches. Um, also about paraliturgical devotions, nothing attested yet in any papyri or whatever. Um, then the textual records. Uh, here we have plenty of things to say. Um, Serapion of Timuist has no known hagiographical text preserved in the Coptic Church. He has, however, a chapter dedicated to him in the lives of illustrious men of Jerome, discussed later. Besides, Evagrius Ponticus describes him as an, the angel of Church of Timuis and records many of the spiritual sayings or of apothegms after quoting many of the desert fathers and doctors of the church, which, which Socrates quotes, him, quotes them after him. Then he's mentioned in historical and hagiographical sources. Um, first of them is a letter to Dracontius, a bishop, uh, addressed to him from Athanasius the Great, um, which uh, where he the text is the following for you Dracontius are not the, the only one who has been elected among monks nor the only one to have presided over a monastery or to have been beloved by monks but you know that not only was Serapion a monk and presided over that number of monks etc from this text, we see Serapion as an abbot or a superior of a monastic community, beloved from, from his monks before becoming a bishop. The second is in the Vita Antoni or the life of Saint Anthony by Athanasius, where he is mentioned twice, first as a friend and confidant of Anthony, and then as a heir uh, among four of his hairs along with Athanasius and two disciples, the two, two disciples who buried him. And then in the lives of illustrious men of Jerome, Jerome dedicates to him a small chapter in his lives of illustrious men, where he says, Serapion, Bishop of Temuis, who on account of his cultivated genius was found worthy of the surname of Scholasticus, was the intimate friend of Anthony the monk and published an excellent book against the Manichees, also another on the title of the Psalms and valuable epistles to different people. In the reign of the emperor Constantius, he was renowned as a confessor. And again, in, in this text, we see Serapion, Scholasticus, intimate friend of Anthony, excellent writer and a confessor. Then in the ecclesiastical histories, first, of Suzumin Scholasticus of Constantinople, um, quoting Evagrius, quoting Serapion in some sayings in spiritual life, as mentioned before. And then the, in the ecclesiastical history of Suzumin, he lists Serapion among a register of holy men who flourished at that time, the fourth century. He mentions him in a category of the most distinguished saints who were noted in the churches about the same period on account of their great eloquence and wrote books worth of record. And he mentioned him um, another a second time uh, where he describes him as a prelate distinguished by the wonderful sanctity of his life and the power of eloquence who was entrusted by Athanasius to go with four Egyptian bishops and three presbyters to defend his case before the emperor 
for the welfare of the church and himself. Noteworthy is that uh, he is the only bishop mentioned by name. And then in the history of the patriarchs of Alexandria, in the chapter of Athanasius, we find just a single sentence. Uh, and Serapion, bishop of Temuis, wrote, the, wrote to the patriarch of Athanasius and all the people that they should keep themselves from the Arians. And lastly, the, in the Copto Arabic Synaxarium, in the commemoration of St. Anthony at the 22nd Tuba, which is equivalent to the 17th of January, uh, we find a recount of the Vita Antonis account of inheriting Antonis sheepskin. Then um, we have many works were attributed to him, a good part of them being hagiographical monastic texts, which would be discussed in the next title, discussing the diffusion of his works and works attributed to him. The diffusion of his works and texts related to him the, um, from his works, I will examine his liturgy in terms of use and spread, especially that it was the most studied of them till now. The prayer book of Serapion dates not later to the mid-fourth mid century. This collection of prayers, even if it consists to mo of more than a layer, it is more likely to attribute the whole of it to one compiler and editor, Serapion of Timis, to whom it was attributed. It could originally be of a person used for Serapion's own episcopal use, but the fact that the text that had come to us with the name attached to some of the prayers suggests a wider use and spread. The texts were preserved in, in a unique Greek manuscript found at Mount Athos that dates to the, to the 11th century. However, being unlike the official liturgies of the great churches, this manuscript this manuscript seems to have been done as a personal production, escaping from the transformation that occurs gradually during the daily use. However, being found at Mount Athos is intriguing and could point out to some kind of spread, reception, and diffusion of the text. In my opinion, this prayer book was used somewhere in the lower de delta of Egypt, um, at least at Timuis, but could be used, used wider. But it was not used for a long period of time. That is why it did not survive in more than a copy, especially being a liturgical book and of lower Egypt, where the humidity does not give a good chance for survival, survival of such material. Um, then the we have many works attributed to him, and I will cite just two of them. The first of them being the pseudo Serapionic version of the li life of Anthony. This version was falsely attributed to Abba Serapion, the bishop and disciple of Saint Anthony. It found a wide reception and popularity as shows the number of its manuscripts compared to the Athanasius Vita Anthony, not only in the monasteries of the Red Sea, but throughout Egypt. By the 14th century, the pseudo serapionic version found its way to the Coptic Arabic, Copto Arabic recension of the Apophthigmata Patrum, known as Bustan al Ruban, the Garden of the Monks or Paradise of the Fathers, and to the liturgical Coptic and Ethiopic texts, and beyond to the West through a Latin translation. This work was known in many. Ver um, Sorry, the second is the, uh, the life of St. Macarius, the Vita Macari. And this work was known in many versions and translations in Coptic, both Bahiric and Sa'idic, Greek, Syriac, Arabic, Ethiopian, Ethiopic, Georgian, etc., which shows a wide percep perception of the text. In my opinion, those two works attributed to him found a great perception, much due to the fame of the saints the work is dedicated to them more than because of the saint the work is attributed to. Then um, about the iconographical representations, his wall paintings in, the, in St. Anthony and St. Paul monasteries near the Red Sea. 
He was depicted in the 13th century iconographical program on the wall, walls of the, of the ancient church of the monastery of St. Anthony near the Red Sea, next to St. Anthony the Great and St. Paul the Hermit. In the first part of the nave of the church dedicated to the saintly monks. So we see uh, him uh, in the middle of the picture. Next to him comes Abba Isaac the, uh, of Nitria and Presbyter of Kelia, then Abba Paul the simple and disciple of St. Anthony. This shows his presence in the collective memory of the monks of St. Anthony in the 13th century and their high esteem of him as a monastic example to follow and to ask his intercession just after the great masters of monasticism, St. Paul and St. Anthony. After about five centuries from the renovation of the church in St. Anthony's monastery, a renovation occurred in the cave church of St. Paul, the neighboring monastery at the Red Sea, the 18th century. A clear relationship could be traced between the 13th century iconographic program and of, of St. Anthony's and his counterpart of the 18th century of St. Paul's. Many figures from the first acting as a model were less skillfully copied in the later and smaller one, among them Saropon of Timis. It is worth considering that the cave church of St. Paul is smaller, thus has smaller place and provides a limited choice of, for saints to be depicted. However, Saropion was again chosen, which shows his importance to the monks. This indicates, again, the continuity of his presence in the collective memory of the monks of the Red Sea monasteries till the 18th century. Finally, after two or three other centuries, some new contemporary icons of him were executed. And then his, uh, about his commemoration and iconography abroad beyond the local Coptic boundaries. Um, he's commemorating traditional churches on the 21st of March. And he has many icons here, um, and I will show just two examples of them. The first being Codex Parisinus Graecus 90, uh, 923, folio 85 verso, um, depicted just beside a quote of him. And the second being the Liber Chronicarum, an incunabula of the uh, end of the um, 15th century. Then um, I will come to a comparison of uh, between Abba Sarapin and some other saints in terms just a second. So here's a kind of table comparing Abba Sarapin of Temuis and some other uh, saints in terms of the means of comm commemoration. I just uh, chose some of them um, who share some common criteria and different in others. So all of them share a kind of uh, ascetic life, but we have also a variety. We have uh, a theologian like Athanasius the Great. We have um, some fathers of monasticism like Anthony the Great, we have uh, Menas the Martyr, a martyr. Uh, and in this table, we can see uh, uh, so um, that of Optimists do not have so many green colors in his column, uh, which uh, shows a relative less popularity. Um, 
Okay, so no time left, so I will uh, just jump to the last point of the dynamism of the popularity of a saint through time. Often the popularity of the of the saints during their afterlife was relative to that of them during their early life. A good example can be Saint Anthony the Great. Nonetheless, the popularity of the saints is not static through time, rather dynamic, and many factors can play a vital role in the revival of the cult of a certain saint in a certain time and place. Sometimes the discovery of his reliques, vita, icon, etc., or spiritual phenomena, such as miracles, visions, apparitions, etc., from the survey of the means of commemoration and veneration of our Serapion of Temuis, it can be noted that there is a long period of silence till the 13th century's wall paintings. That arises many questions. Was there other works that did not survive? Was this new apparition of the saint on the wall paintings due to the, to the Renaissance of the 13th century, which could imply a return to the, to the ancient sources like the Vita Antoni and other sources? Was it due to the external influences, due to the openness to the external Mediterranean world at that time? Questions that are still not easy to answer adequately, but at least the context of the Renaissance of the 13th century in the Coptic church, both in literary and artistic works, would be a good assumption, especially that the saint under discussion was a monastic figure that appeared in a monastic milieu which had access to monastic literature. Thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Johanna, for this informative uh, presentation about Serapium of Themuas. So now it's the uh, time for questions, please. Any questions? So I can just add a comment uh, on this um, informative presentation. So it's very interesting uh, when we have uh, commemorating an important figure, saint, well-known, and to have it from all the perspectives in iconography and also in the liturgy, how, it, uh, how um, this important person, Serapium of Themoas, was uh, venerated and also started in the past and continued till nowadays. And it's very interesting to see how the same figure with the icon, his typical iconography, is represented in contemporary Coptic art. Thank you very much, uh, Johanna, for this informative presentation. Thank you.